Good day. I am Dr. Joseph Vinu, consultant nephrologist working in Holy Cross Hospital, Kutiam, Kuala. Dialysis is a procedure in which you separate the impurities from the blood. The word meaning dialysis is to separate. So, dialysis is a procedure in which you will separate the impurities which accumulate in the blood of patients with kidney disease and make the blood pure. There are two different kinds of dialysis which are being done commonly. First one is hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is a procedure in which you take the blood out of the body and circulate it through an artificial kidney which is placed outside the body and then purify the blood and then return the blood back to the patient. And this is usually done at a hemodialysis center. Sometimes the machine can be placed at home and you can conduct home hemodialysis also. The second kind of dialysis is called the peritoneal dialysis in which the peritoneum or the, the layer of the skin inside the abdomen acts as the artificial kidney. You infuse a medicine into the abdomen peritoneal cavity and then wait for some time so that the impurities from the blood will diffuse into this uh, medicine and this medicine can be taken out and this is called peritoneal dialysis. Dialysis is being done for usually in patients with kidney disease. There are two kinds of kidney disease. One is an acute kidney disease and is a chronic kidney disease. Acute kidney disease is a disease which occurs suddenly and sometimes the patient may become sick very fast and hence you may have to do dialysis immediately. The chronic kidney disease is a kind of kidney disease in which it is the disease is permanent and the disease progresses slowly. So these are two situations that is acute kidney disease and chronic kidney disease are the two situations in which you will have to do dialysis. There is another situation in which you may have to do dialysis that is in some situation, some uh, poisonings like in poisoning due to some drugs which can be removed by dialysis. For example, barbiturate poisoning. In patients with kidney disease, the frequency of dialysis is determined by the severity of the illness. In patients who are having acute kidney disease, the frequency is usually alternate day dialysis until the kidney becomes better. And in those patients who are having chronic kidney disease and the disease frequency will vary according to the severity of the illness. If the disease is severe, we will start with twice weekly hemodialysis. And then later on when the disease progresses, we may convert that to thrice weekly dialysis. Sometimes the patient may be very sick in the beginning, in which case you will start with thrice weekly dialysis and when the patient becomes better, you may be able to go back to twice weekly dialysis. The frequency of dialysis so depends upon the severity of the illness the patient has. As I told you earlier, there are two kinds of kidney diseases. One is acute kidney disease in which there is a chance for recovery of kidney functions. So when the kidney functions recover sufficiently, we may be able to stop dialysis in those patients who are having acute kidney disease. In those patients who are having chronic kidney disease, the disease, the name chronic itself implies that it is permanent. So in 90% of the times, it, we may not be able to stop dialysis at any point of time. They may have to continue dialysis lifelong. But then in some, most, some patients go in for kidney transplantations. After a successful kidney transplantation, when the kidney functions become better, we will be able to stop dialysis. Dialysis, even though it is very effective, has had is riddled with complications. One of the most common complications is hypotension or otherwise called low BP. This occurs in those patients who accumulate lot of fluid during the interdialytic period. And other causes for hypotension are cardiac disease, liver disease and those patients who take medicines before the dialysis. So to avoid hypotension, you will have to restrict your fluid intake and the dialysis schedule may have to be tailored according to the patient's blood pressure.
dialysis patients are at risk for protein energy malnutrition so in contrast to those patients who are not on dialysis the dialysis patients are expected to take more protein in their diet that is for every kilogram body weight they should take 1.2 grams of protein that is a patient with 60 kg should take 72 grams of protein which is equivalent to the protein contained in 12 eggs and compared to a normal person who does not have kidney disease this protein intake is high because they these patients are always in a catabolic or their proteins are always being broken down which has to be replaced so they need very high protein diet and second one is they have to restrict their fluid intake so that the weight gain between two dialysis sessions is minimized and the dialysis will be smooth and you have to have a low potassium diet low potassium diet means you have to avoid fruits and fruit juices and also other uh, foods which contain high potassium like yogurt buttermilk etc has to be avoided and this will help you to keep the potassium levels in the body a constant and thus prevent complications and also a low salt diet is recommended for control of blood pressure so essentially a high protein low potassium low fluid low salt diet it is not enough to do dialysis and to take medicines alone there are some other measures which has to be addressed to keep the patient healthy one of them is adequate exercise aerobic exercises like walking jogging swimming cycling and yoga are very very essential to keep a patient healthy whatever food we take if we want to convert this food into muscles you will have to do exercises exercises will help to reduce the fatigue experienced by the dialysis patients exercise adequate food adequate dialysis and essential medicines this is the these are the keys towards a healthy life in dialysis thank you